just want to give you a tour of my cargo trailer that I converted. Uh, I just want to thank uh, all the people on YouTube that helped me uh, come up with the ideas and some of the people that actually helped me uh, build some of it too. So let's get to it. So this is my cargo trailer. It's a 7 foot wide by 14 foot long, all aluminum. I got this built uh, for me specifically because I wanted an aluminum trailer. And I also wanted to put in my door on the front of the V instead to give me a little bit more wall space inside. So as you can see, I have a solar light at the front entrance way to help with lighting up the entrance. I tried on this project to do as much reclaimed things as possible that I had around the house and that. So I took a pallet made in step. These are folding uh, legs so I can store them away really nice and easily. When I got this built from Canadian Trailers, I got them to put in two windows, one like this on this side and one on the other side. And I got it fully insulated from them as well, just to save time for myself. Up at the top, you can just see a little bit of a um, rack that I built. I used some U-channel and some aluminum uh, square pipe to go across because I have 200 watts of solar on the roof of Renogy solar panels. As you can see, what I did was I did doors in the back. I debated for a very long time whether to do doors or whether to do a drop door. Um, I decided doors would be more handy depending on where I was uh, camping because the, having the door come down, it would take a lot more room so I wouldn't be able to back up the trailer nearly as far. I put another one of those solar lights at the back so that it can light up. I gotta say, these things are amazing. They last forever and ever and ever when they, they go on. Let's just open up the back here. So I did something a little bit different on my setup. What I wanted to do was have a door in the back, but the door was really not to go in and out of, but more to have the capabilities of sliding my kayaks or my bikes in when we we're traveling. Uh, it also would give me more light too when I opened up these doors. So I made the door, made the door um, out of pine and different types of materials. Uh, I gotta say, I'm not a carpenter by any trades. This is the first time I've ever done, taken on anything like this. Uh, but, uh, you know, after watching a lot of different YouTube and thanks to all those people basically that post things on YouTube, tiny houses and so forth like that, I kind of came up with my own designs. So as you can see, I have a door and what's better than being able to play some darts when you're actually camping. So the nice thing about this is that we can open up the door, I have a flip up shelf there so you can always put your beverage. Of course you have to have the beer opener there as well. And then we have the, the dart board there. On the back, some of the things that you'll see is basically I put some um, bungees across to be able to hook on different types of things from hot dog cooker uh, sticks to you know my axe, a water bottle uh, to fill up when we get there. I've also put uh, a lights in here, so I have a 12 volt light right there. Down at the bottom, this is a pass through that actually goes inside my trailer where I have my two burner uh, cooktop. It's not a, you know, the little Coleman, it's the great big ones that you have. Uh, so I have a slide all the way through into there. On this side, the handiest tool I think I put in here is the collapsible ladder. It's super handy when putting up tarps and that when we're away camping or just getting to the roof. Once again, another one of those nice lights to light up the back end when I need to. Now what I wanted to do is to have this 100% 12 volt uh, capable in here and just some AC if I needed to or I had a hookup. So what I did was, once again, I was reusing things and I took a, one of our vacuum outlets for inside so I didn't want to drill into the doors or anything so I drilled underneath and as you can see, I'll run an extension cord up there and then this plugs into here, the extension cord, and that gives me basically 110 inside the uh, trailer. So really trying to keep the trailer as stock as possible on the outside. So other than just windows out there, people wouldn't know that it's anything more than really a cargo trailer. Okay, so this is what the front door opened up. What we did was we put a screen in here 
So one of those magnetic screens, so it's super easy when you walk in. It just comes back and it automatically hooks back up for you. So let's just walk in. So looking from the back here, there's the door. Uh, I have a coat rack right next to this because you can never have enough hooks and so forth. So I've got multiple hooks in here. And then a little cubbies to be able to put some shoes that in and uh, made it so that they slide in and out so that if I needed to put something a little bit taller in I could. All these cabinetry cabinets are just been built by me so I really wanted to keep everything as streamlined as possible. We got a clock there, of course the Bob Marley speaker which is essential. We have a fire uh, detector as well as carbon monoxide. This is our pantry where we put all our food and different things like that. So you can see inside there, lots and lots of storage available to us. I also have one of these magnetic lights up here, uh, which are handy. I can turn it on for motion sensing as well. And then of course my wife wanted to have a little bit of a mirror. So we have a mirror in here as well. So let's close that up. These latch through, never had them pop open except when we had a watermelon down at the bottom and it uh, actually pushed it open. Garbage can, we have a, we use an electric heater. Uh, we don't typically camp when it's too, too cold. So, but I have a little portable one if I need to. And if we have a, an electricity hookup, like I mentioned. The fire extinguisher on this side here, we have a shelf um, to pop up, super handy. We put stuff on there all the time. So when we're doing a pass through kind of thing, and, my wife's inside here, I'm outside. We can just reach in and grab the stuff off of that counter. These are with uh, simple uh, um, adjustable shelving, basically. And you just put these down and then put it down like that and it's stored away. A little light at the front door too. We look at this unit here. This is our fridge. Uh, fantastic fridge. Uh, one thing that was really important to me was to conserve as much power as possible. Figured a more of a chest style fridge would be much better. Uh, this has got Danfoss um, compressor in there as well. Uh, this one's uh, made by Unique, but uh, we loved it. We've gone away for a week without any power whatsoever and be able to use this 100% of the time. So have different uh, pieces so you know there's one side and then the other side as well this this frizz can actually be a uh, refrigerator for both sides or it can be freezer for both sides or half and half and the nice thing too with this unit is you can actually turn them off and on so as we deplete it we can shut sides off uh, down at the bottom we have storage so one thing when i designed it too i wanted to make it so that it was up tall number one so it was easy to get to Another thing, it could be a surface that we could use as well if we weren't going into the fridge. Down at the bottom, we have the porta potty. So I have a porta potty here. What we do is my wife takes it out at nighttime and we just set it right along the side here. And we put this curtain up so that we could slide it across and she'd be able to go to the washroom in the night or even during the day. And we've actually found out that this curtain's super, super handy because even if someone wants to get dressed in here and leave the door open, they can do. So it's privacy both sides actually. And uh, actually during movie night, we hang a projector or a screen on there. On this side of it, we have our pots and pans and all that kind of stuff. So nice, big, big, big storage there. If you look at this side here, this is our little kitchen. So I have a sink. And two cabinets. I went with sliders um, mainly because then I didn't have to worry about any of the doors popping open when we were loaded. And so if I slide this across here like that, I bought uh, racks from uh, IKEA basically. So I put those in. So we have our cutlery on one and different things, pots and pans, plates and all that kind of stuff. And they all slide in and out very nice and easy. A couple more hooks, another beer opener. That I have a switch here for a light, which I'll show you actually right now. So I turns the light on. I made this light 
across here I took some PVC pipe, I cut slits into it, and I put a LED strip inside it. So I have the flexibility of turning this around and moving it. So it nicely lights up our trailer, not too bright, just just the right amount of light. We have running water in here. I have a 12 volt uh, pump for the sink. Let me just, it's always hard doing all this stuff with one hand. But uh, so there's the sink. Underneath the sink here, I have my 12, 12 volt pump in the back. I have two jugs, one for the gray water, one for the fresh water. So I know basically when one's empty, the other one's definitely going to be full. This is where I also just store uh, different things. Here's our cooktop, nice old cooktop, but it works amazing. So this Coleman stove we typically take outside. We don't typically cook in here, but we could if we wanted to. So that's where add all stores, and once again, just slide that across. We look down in the back. Something that was really important for me is try to give as much space as possible in the trailer and. Uh, so I, what I did was I made an elevating bed, and uh, well, before we get to that, if we look down the side here, basically I have eight foot benches inside, underneath these pillows, basically. I have cubbies, so for any kind of clothing that we might have, the jackery, anything else that we might be taking with us. And remember when I said that door in the back there slid inside here? Well, it comes all the way in to here, and then I can either get to it from in here or from the outside. So I kept it nice and contained, but much easier to be able to pull thing in, something that size out than to actually have to lift it up and take it out. So this has uh, been really handy because the fact is that, you know, it obviously is inevitable that it rains when you go camping sometimes. So we can have lots of people in here. I have a table that I, I pull out and uh, we can play cards, play games, and that on these benches. Another thing too, that with the bench, um, we can actually sleep on it. So we can take this back cushion off and it's wide enough for two people to sleep on it if it need to be too. In the back here, uh, you'll see I have a little cubby. Um, this basically shows me how much power I have left on my um, batteries. So I'm at 100% right now. And uh, I created, moved, put this here so that it would slide across, so it would cover it up because at nighttime it basically glows if it starts charging or starts um, removing uh, power because of the fridge or so forth, whatever. Cubby to put phone and so forth like that inside there. I actually have some jacks too, so you can see I have some USB jacks inside, so I plug my phone in and, and keep it in there for at night time. On this side here, this is another spot where we I put my one, 110 connections here, so this is just super simple. Plug it in from the outside into the plug where I showed you. This just comes down to these two outlets, so these are the only outlets that are 110. Actually, there's one underneath the other bench too That because that fridge can be 12 volt or 110. Got a couple of USB connectors and so forth here. Got another switch here. This is for the pump for the uh, sink to turn on or turn off. So I typically have it off when we're not using it. And once again, we have cubbies all down the side here. Uh, I'll just show you quickly the power in here. So here's my power. So I have two AGM batteries, 120 amp hours each. So 240 amp hours. Um, Rendry solar controller. Uh, one thing that was really important for me is I didn't want to put any holes in the roof. Uh, the only one I actually had to do was just to get the wires from the solar panels down here. So I got my, uh, my fuse box, breaker for up at the, uh, for the solar panels total breaker to shut all the batteries off there's my shunt for my to tell me how full my uh, batteries are and then obviously my batteries I have a SeaTac um, so when I actually plug the power in from outside it plugs into that as well and you can see there's a power strip right there so that's plugged into that um, so that it'll start charging my batteries for me and then at the same time I have other the other uh, 
plugs plugged into this power bar. So pretty really simple 110 connection because uh, I really didn't need anything too fancy uh, for the amount of draw that I'm doing on 110. I have another uh, light switch here. I tried to kind of place them strategically depending on what we're doing. Uh, so if I flip that on, this is underneath the bed right now. So I have a nice strip across there. So when we're playing games, we we'll, can turn the light on uh, for underneath the bed. And then I also put this, the brown top there that you're seeing, that's the actual table, um, the, the kitchen table thing that we use for uh, playing cards and that. And then there's the slats for underneath the bed. Um, the crossbar here is an Ikea crossbar that they sell um, for all their beds, basically. And then the slats are also from Ikea as well. So let's uh, show you the bed. So because I didn't want to put any holes in the roof, uh, I wanted a simple pulley system, something that I didn't have to have any electricity for. So I got a bolt winch, uh, the bar going across, is it just PVC pipe to kind of hide the uh, cable. And uh, it's a pretty simple mechanism. i do this with that. There we go. So you can see, we just basically wind it down. And the bed comes down. There you go. And so there's a bed. Uh, bed's a queen size bed, full size. Um, queen size. I put uh, a little shelf here for my wife for, for nighttime. And then you can see the cubby across the way there is actually accessible when the bed's down as well. The bed's pretty simple in the sense of it's sitting on two crossbars down at the bottom. There's some L angles, aluminum L angles, so that's nice, fully sturdy. Um, so this is, you know, where we sleep. Uh, ventilation, I have windows that open up. And then I have a vent. So I took a vent from my house that we weren't using anymore. I put two 12-volt fans in there. Uh, there's a switch for it right in my little cubby. To turn it on so it can suck out air so it pulls air out of the system out of here giving us a nice uh, power or some nice breeze through here once again there's the door and it give us lots of light there's a little blind above there that can come down as well so that's uh the bed now i can take my table uh so if i have another person sl sleeping i put i have aluminum bars basically that I can set the table onto and the nice thing about it is that with the pillows they will just oops, sit it's really hard to do this one one hand basically these just go across like so and then the table will sit on top of here um, on top of those and then the back these, these would just go across here, basically filling that space so a person can sleep straight across. Um, and that's a lot of times my daughter or whatever might sleep on there. Or if we have four people sleeping in here because of bad weather, we'll put it there. They'll put their feet underneath the bed and then have the heads here and here kind of thing. But then they have this all filled in as well. So it's nice and comfortable for them. So it's really just the feet have a smaller place to put. So that's uh, the bed setup and uh, the trailer. So um, I hope uh, you'd enjoyed the uh, walk through my trailer. And uh, if you have any comments or anything or any questions, feel free to ask. Thanks a lot. Have a great day.